The Trek Marlin 2022 models have landed in India and a lot of you have requested that we do a video on this series. Now you might be wondering why I chose the Marlin 8. Well it's simply because I think it's one of the best hardtails that you can buy for under 1 lakh rupees from a major bicycle brand. So today I'll be taking a deep dive into the Marlin 8 which is Trek's top of the line Marlin model and retails for around 85,000 Indian rupees. Is this the hardtail for you? Let's find out in bike unveiling of the Trek Marlin 8. Marlin is a do-it-all hardtail for weekend trail adventures and weekday commutes. Of all the trail-worthy bikes in our lineup, it's the best choice for getting into mountain biking. So starting with the frame, the Marlin 8 comes in 8 sizes, which is huge, from 2XS to 2XL. In addition to this, everything is size specific. The frame till size small has a lower standover height. The wheels for a size small are also smaller at 27.5. And so is the brake rotors, the stem. The stem is 60mm compared to 90mm for size large. And the brake rotors are also 160mm or 180mm depending on which size do you buy. I think this is an excellent touch because it means that you can dial the bike right according to your body size. So the frame frame on the Marlin 8 is the Trek Alpha Silver Aluminium frame. Now this is a frame that is shared across the Marlin range. So whether it's the Marlin 5 that you're buying or the Marlin 8, it has the same frame. So there are no great shakes there. What this frame features is internal cable routing. Again, a great touch for a mountain bike because if you're buying a bike for real mountain bike use, you'll probably be cleaning the mountain bike after every ride. And internal cable routing makes it much easier to do that. It comes with a disc brake mount. Again, for mountain bikes, disc brakes are a given in today's age. It has mounts for a rack and a kickstand and that is quite surprising for the Marlin 8 because this is not a bike that you would buy for commuting. For that I think the Marlin 5 is a much better model. I think most people buying the Marlin 8 would be using it exclusively for mountain biking and uh, I don't think it really has a need for a rack and a kickstand. But yes, more is better. I mean it does add flexibility uh, and it probably has to do with the fact uh, what I said before is that the Marlin frame is the same across the entire range. So I don't think they would have made that change specifically for the Marlin 8. It comes with a standard mountain bike 135mm quick release uh, dropouts. Do note that these are quick release dropouts and not through axles. And this being 2022 model, I'll dock a few points from Trek for using an older standard. Another interesting bit to notice about the Marlin frames is that the head tube is non-tapered, but I'll come back to that later. Moving on to the fork. The fork on the Marlin 8 is the RockShox Judy Silver fork. It comes with a solo air spring. It does have rebound and dampening adjustment. Of course, it has a lockout and the fork has QR dropouts just like the frame and it has a 100 mm of travel. I think having an air spring suspension is quite a good idea because it means that you can adjust that suspension according to the rider weight and there is almost an infinite amount of adjustment that you can do with an air spring as compared to a coil spring. The other advantage of an air spring is that it is much lighter as compared to a coil spring and the third good thing about this fork is that it comes with rebound and dampening adjustment. So essentially it means that you can fine tune this fork according to the terrain that you're riding on that day. The lockout is a good idea because when you're climbing or when you're getting to the trail over paved surface you, you really don't need that suspension so what you can do is you can lock it out and have far more efficient pedaling. Having a quality air suspended fork up front really adds to the trail worthiness of the Marlin 8. So the drivetrain on the Marlin 8 is a full SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain. This is a one by drivetrain which essentially means that there is a single chain ring up front and there is a 12 speed wide range cassette at the back. And the SRAM SX Eagle uh, 1150 cassette at the back means that you still get about 480% of gear ratios. So just because it's a one by system it doesn't mean that you lose out on the gearing and it is full SRAM SX Eagle. That essentially means that the crank, the cassettes, even the chain is SRAM SX Eagle. For those of you who are not familiar with SRAM's component hierarchy this is the cheapest budget offering so if i was to compare this with the shimano uh, drivetrain just to give you an idea I, this is exactly similar to the dure 6100 12 speed drivetrain from shimano the latest one not the older models so uh, most bike companies would use a kmc chain or, or try and use a different crank just to cut costs but that's not been done here so like i said before uh, the cranks the bottom bracket the chain the cassette the rear derailleur is all ceramic six eagle there is no budget componentry that's been squeezed in uh, at places that you would not really not pay attention and Trek is not right to cut costs here. But what they have done is that they've used a power spline uh, bottom bracket. So with the SX Eagle, you get a choice between the power spline and the dub system. The power spline is like the Shimano Octalink system and the dub system is like the Shimano Holotech system. So while they could have used uh, the dub system here and frankly, I'm a big fan of two-piece cranks, they've chosen instead to go ahead with the power spline system. And I don't understand the logic for that. Uh, maybe it was done to cut costs 
enough because I can see no advantage of a power spline system over a dub system. The crank again is an Ram SX Eagle. It has a 30 tooth chain ring up front. For a size small and medium, it comes with a 170 mm crank arm. And for sizes medium, large, large and XL, it comes with a 175 mm crank arm. Again, going back to what I said before, most of these Trek models are size specific because if you're a shorter person, the chances are that your legs will be shorter as well and a smaller crank arm will suit you better. If you're a slightly taller person, the probability is that your legs are going to be longer as well and slightly longer crank arm will suit you better. So kudos to Trek for thinking about all of this. And if you want to replace that chain ring, the biggest uh, chain ring that you can fit up front is a 34 tooth chain ring. At the back, we have a 12 speed Eagle cassette. It's 11 fifth set, which essentially means that the smallest cog is 11 teeth and the largest cog is 50 teeth. Having a 30 tooth chain ring up front and a 50 tooth cog at the back essentially means that you have a huge amount of low gears that you can play with. And that is great for a mountain biker because in India, we don't have the concept of mountain bike parks or lifts to get you up there. You really have to climb using your bike and you can never have enough low gears when you're doing a lot of climbing. So this one by drivetrain really gives you a lot of options when it comes to the lower gears. On the flip side, the problem with the one by system is that the 30 11 combination doesn't give you enough tall gears. So if you think you can keep up with your road riding friends on tarmac with this bike, uh, you'll be disappointed because you will run out of tall gears and probably not be able to maintain a consistent speed of say more than 40 kmph uh, on a paved or a flat surface. This bike is meant to be a mountain bike and for that having a lot more lower gears than higher gears is always a better option. The rear derailleur on this bike is again a Ceram SX Eagle rear derailleur. It comes with a built-in clutch. Again, a built-in clutch is a mechanism by which your chain remains taut across the gear range which means that it doesn't slip out and it doesn't hit your chains because the clutch keeps it at a specific tension. Coming down to the wheels of the Trek Marlin 8 and this is a place where most manufacturers get it wrong. You've probably seen me time and again complain that the hubs are no name or the wheel set is not good. That is not the case for Marlin 8. This is one of the few times that the manufacturer has got everything right. So let me explain this by going over the entire wheel set piece by piece. The front and rear hubs on the uh, Marlin 8 are Formula DC20 hubs. These are not really expensive hubs but they are good quality hubs. They retail for around 30 euros per hub and it's refreshing to see a brand use a decent quality hub from a reputable manufacturer. The rims on the bike are Bontrager Covey double walled tubeless ready rims. I've had the chance of using the Bontrager Covey rims on another bike and I've been very impressed by these rims. These are good strong rims and they stay true for a really long amount of time. Which is great again for mountain biking because truing your uh, wheels is one of the most difficult chores that a home mechanic can do. The really great thing about these rims is that they are tubeless ready. Because in today's day and age when it comes to mountain bikings I think tubeless is the way to go. With a tubeless setup you can run much lower tire pressures and you don't have to worry about snake bite punctures. Even the spokes on these wheels are stainless steel. Most manufacturers try and cut costs by using steel spokes that are galvanized but having truly stainless steel spokes makes them last a really long amount of time. These are small bits that a normal user might not notice while buying the bike but these are important bits. All of this adds up to a very reliable wheel set. Finally coming down to the tires, again a great choice. These are Maxxis Arden Trace tubeless tires front and rear. So what you get is a tubeless ready wheel set and you get tubeless ready tires. While the Marlin 8 does not come tubeless ready setup out of the box, but it's very easy to get some rim tape, some valves and just convert it to a tubeless setup. In fact, that is the first thing that I would do after buying this bike. Another interesting bit about these tires which confuses most people is that the front tire is a 2.35 inch tire, while the rear tire is a narrow 2.2 inch tire. And the reason for doing that is because your front tire needs to have a lot more traction than the rear tire. You can always recover from a rear tire skid, but a front tire washout is almost impossible to recover out of. And this is the kind of setup that most cross-country racers use. So I'm really happy to see that Trek has really put their best foot forward when it comes to the wheels and tires on this bike. So finally, the brakes on the Marlin 8 are a pair of Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes. The MT200 is a twin piston braking system. It is also Shimano's entry-level braking system. So while there is nothing wrong with the MT200, I just wish it came with better brakes like the uh, DRA6100 uh, system, which, which incorporates Shimano's servo wave action technology. Servo wave action is a technology that allows for faster engagement of uh, brake pads uh, to the disc rotor. And it also gives you far better modulation. Even the DRA6100 brakes are two pistons, so there is nothing that you will lack with the MT200. For a bike in this price segment, I wish they would have upgraded the brakes to something better. 
Finally, moving on to the components on the uh, Marlin 8. All of this comes from Craig's home brand, Bontrager. The saddle is a Bontrager Arvada. The seat post is a Alloy 31.6 mm seat post, which you might think is a good idea because it's quite a common size for a dropper post. But one thing to note here, and that's a big flaw with the uh, Marlin 8, is that it does not come with routing for an internal dropper post. The handlebar, again, is a Bontrager uh, 720mm handlebar, and the stem length varies according to different sizes. And the pedals are a VP536 nylon platform pedals. This is something that you would probably want to upgrade if you're doing a lot of mountain biking trails. And finally, all of this adds up to a weight of 13.2 kilograms, which is about 700 grams lighter than the Scott 930 that we reviewed recently. And also the Marlin 7 in Trex lineup. So let's move on to the things that I really like about this bike and things that I dislike about this bike. So the first thing that I like is the RockShox Judy Silver Ear Spring Fork, which comes with rebound and dampening adjustment and a lockout as well. I think this is an excellent choice for a bike that's priced at around 80,000 Indian rupees. The second thing that I love about the Marlin 8 is the Saram SX Eagle drivetrain that it comes with. This drivetrain is well suited for its intended usage, and I personally think Saram drivetrains command greater respect among the mountain bike community as compared to Shimano drivetrains. Third, and my favorite thing about this bike is the wheel set and the tires that it comes with. This is a combination of tubeless ready tires and wheels. The rims are decent, uh, the hubs are good, everything that you would need uh, for the next five years of mountain biking. The fourth thing is that Trek provides this bike in size specific frames. As you go down into the smaller sizes, uh, the tire size, the stem size, everything changes to keep it in line with your body height. And the fifth and the final thing that I really love about this bike is the red radioactive color with dark gray decals. I think it looks excellent. All cyclists know that red bikes are just faster, so no arguments about that. Moving on to the dislikes, uh, what I don't like is the fact that it comes with the old standards because it has no boost spacing hubs. Boost is becoming the new standard when it comes to uh, mountain bike hubs and I think Trek missed out on an opportunity here, but perhaps it was intentional to upgrade the customer to their Excalibur range. The second thing and my biggest grouse with this bike is that it doesn't come with dropper post uh, routing. I think in 2022, having a dropper post on any serious mountain bike is a must. The third thing is that there are no three axles on this bike it still relies on the qr standard which is fine qr has been working well for the last 20 years or so but through axles are definitely better and uh, again it's it's a question of having the latest standards on a bike which makes it easy for you to upgrade things if, if you're using older standards after another five years you'll uh, not be able to find the right components for that bike the fourth grouse that i have with all the marlin range is that it comes with a non-tapered head tube a non-tapered head tube essentially restricts you when you're buying a new fork because no, most of the forks that are being launched nowadays come with the tapered uh, setup. It's just uh, their way of saying if you want the latest specs, upgrade to the Excalibur range, which I think is kind of stupid. And finally, the MT200 uh, hydraulic disc brakes that it comes with is an entry-level set. I wish Trek would have specced it with something slightly higher. I'm not saying that they should have gone all out with the uh, Diore XT range or something, but uh, because the drivetrain is very close to the Diore 6100, I, I wish it would have come with Diore 6100 hydraulic disc brakes. So before I start to conclude on the Marlin 8, it would be unfair if I didn't compare it to the Marlin 7. Because you might be wondering that the Marlin 7 costs about 15,000 rupees less than the Marlin 8. And what does the Marlin 8 have that the Marlin 7 does not have? So let me break it down into things that are the same between the two bikes and things where the Marlin 8 scores over the Marlin 7. So the things that are the same across the Marlin 7 and the Marlin 8 is the Alpha Aluminium Silver Frame. Both of these bikes have quick release front and rear. Both of these bikes have the same rim, so that is the Bontrager Core which is a double wall rim. They have the same hydraulic disc brake setups, the Shimano MT200, and they have the same disc rotor as well, which is the Shimano RT26. It's a six bolt rotor, not a center lock rotor, 160 mm diameter. In addition to that, the Bontrager components like the Arvada seat, the seat post, the handlebars are the same across both the Marlin 7 and the Marlin 8. But there are certain areas in which uh, the Marlin 8 is better. So starting with the fork, the Marlin 8 comes with the RockShock air suspension, whereas the Marlin 7 comes with the RockShock coil spring suspension. Air suspension is much lighter compared to a coil spring suspension and it is far more tunable as compared to a coil suspension. It does not make a coil suspension bad, it's just that you get far more possibility on an air suspension. The other big difference between the two is that the Marlin 8 comes with a full SRAM SX Eagle 12-speed drivetrain, whereas the Marlin 7 comes with a 10-speed drivetrain, which is a mishmash of Shimano Diore 4100 and FSA crankset. Also, the hubs on the Marlin 8 are much better uh, as compared to the Marlin 7. Both of 
of these are formula hubs, but they're in different price categories. But the most important difference for me is that the Marlin 8 comes picked with better tires. The Maxxis Ardent Race tires are 60 TPI as compared to the Bontrager XR2 comp tires on the Marlin 7, which are only 30 TPI. And the Bontrager tires on the Marlin 7 are not tubeless ready. So in case you want to go for a tubeless setup, you'll have to spend more on getting tubeless ready tires. And finally, uh, the Marlin 8 weighs about uh, 300 grams less as compared to the Marlin 7. So in conclusion, if you're an experienced mountain biker or you live close to the hills and you just want a hardtail that is dialed just right out of the box, then get a Marlin 8. I think it offers exceptional value for money. However, if you want a bike that you want to keep for a long time and you want to upgrade it over time, then I would suggest taking a look at the Excalibur 7. Because like I mentioned before, the Marlin 8 doesn't come with the tapered head tube, which is there for the Excalibur 7. Also, the Excalibur 7 comes with boost hubs, but in order to get through axles, you'll have to move up to Excalibur 8, which is another 15,000 rupees more expensive than the Marlin 8. As far as the other Marlins go, let me break it down. If you're completely new to mountain biking or don't live very close to the hills and you would want just one bike to commute and to mountain bike on, get yourself a Marlin 5. If you're a semi-experienced mountain biker and you're on a budget, then I would suggest getting the Marlin 7 because there is inherently nothing wrong with that bike. And, and finally, like I said before, if you're an experienced mountain biker or live close to the hills and you want a bike out of the box that just works, get yourself a Marlin 8. I would give Marlin 8 four and a half out of five llamas because it brings exception value to the mountain biking world. It's a great bike for people who just want to buy a bike and not be bothered for upgrades in the next few years. And the kit with a nice fork and tubeless ready rims and wheels make it a sweet deal. I've dog wrecked half a llama for two things. One of them is routing for the dropper posts and the other is not following the latest biking standards. So there you have it. That was the Trek Marlin 8 unveiled for you. If you think this video helped you, do hit the like and subscribe button and we'll be reviewing the Marlin 5 very soon so stay tuned for that. This is Bharat from Gear Lama signing off. Ride your bike and have a good one.